name is Ian McLean and today I'd like to speak to you about litigation risk management in the context of the emergency response team when we're dealing with a major casualty. Now, we will all be familiar with the ISM code's objectives of protection of the environment, protection of property, prevention of injury to personnel. And these, of course, will be the three main focus items for an emergency response team when a casualty occurs. However, there is an additional risk that needs to be considered. It is almost certain that any major casualty will lead to litigation, either as a consequence of the ship owner having to defend claims or the ship owner having to advance claims against other parties. And the decisions and requirements of the emergency response team in the first few hours and days of a casualty can actually have a major impact on how successful the owner may be in court or before a tribunal in due course. Now, before addressing those items and details, I'd like to talk about a thing called privilege. As a matter of English law, you do not have to provide to your opponent documents which are privileged. So this would include legal advice privilege. These are documents between a lawyer and his client giving legal advice. There's also something called litigation privilege. This would apply where, for example, a document comes into being because somebody needs advice about pending litigation. So the test there would be, what is the dominant purpose of the document? If the dominant purpose of the document is to give advice about litigation, then it's probably protected. If the dominant purpose is to find out what went wrong in order to say to comply with section nine of the ISM code, then it's probably not protected. Now, the obligation to disclose documents extends to documents that help your case, that harm your case, that help your opponent's case and harm your opponent's case. So it's quite broad, although it's subject to being proportional and being reasonable. It is also continuous. So what does that mean? That means it continues right up the final judgment. So documents created after a casualty occurs, but before the final judgment would fall within that class of document, if they're not privileged, that you would have to provide to an opponent. So this would include the master's self-drafted statement. This would include safety meetings that are for a meeting that are held after the incident occurs. Supposing we take the documents from a casualty and use them at a senior fleet officer meeting as a training exercise, this would have to be disclosed as, poss as well. So it's important that when you're asking for documents from the vessel, when you're asking for explanations and so on, that you be aware that those documents that you're asking for will one day be before the court. Equally, documents in the emergency response room, logbooks. If you have a microphone that records everything that happens in the emergency response room, that may also have to be produced to an opponent. So it's important that the emergency response team talks about mitigation. How do we prevent anything getting worse? How do we bring the situation under control? And they don't talk about causation. Why did it happen? What were the reasons behind it happening? Because probably in the early hours, the information that's coming in will be incomplete and there's a risk that we will come to wrong conclusions. It's also important that within the emergency response team, we have gatekeepers. We have someone who's responsible for working out what evidence needs to be collected and preserved, Take the advice of your PNI club or your lawyer. What we don't want is in five years' time when we go to court, we find the ship has been scrapped or sold and documents have disappeared. If we want crew to sign witness statements, we make sure that they're available. If people within the company are sending messages to charterers and agents, we probably want to check those and make sure that nothing's been said in them that could prejudice later on. So there needs to be a complete change of mindset by those in the company, and we need to have the gatekeepers to check that what's going out and what's being done does the best to protect you in the event of that major casualty. And in these circumstances, the best thing you can do in the first instance is to take advice from your PNI club on what it is that you should or should not be doing.